All right. Uh, where do we go? Where do we go? Okay, Bill. Uh, really want to thank you for the podcast. It has helped me tremendously in getting through one of the hardest times of my life. Well, thank you very much. I won't drag it out too much, but basically my wife and I had a daughter, and two years later we ended up with triplets too. Wow. It was brutally hard. Yeah, dude. You know you know what sucks when you get the triplets? It Not only is it brutally hard, but it's not quite hard enough to make the fucking local news and have people send you money for your fucking health insurance. You know? What is that magic number? It's got to be at least four, if not five. And then people give a shit. But if you have eight, they resent you. Okay. Um, I discovered I get panic and anxiety attacks from the sound of the baby screaming. And the worries of four little kids gives me um, three-day-long anxiety attacks over the smallest things. I slipped into a serious depression for about a year. Um, The market destroyed our savings. Jesus Christ, dude. This sounds like the beginning of one of those fucking sad basic cable movies. Soon after the triplet's second birthday... During Father's Day weekend in early summer, the wife tells me she isn't really in love with me anymore. Father's Day weekend, she says that. What the fuck? She also has taken off her wedding ring just to see if I would notice. Well, I didn't. I was a bit more worried about surviving each day with four kids screaming all day, long enough, long, through oh, oh shit, screaming all day long and living on four hours of sleep. For the previous two years. Yeah, you know, that's that classic woman thing where they just, they don't say what's on their mind. Is they send you what they say. They send signals. You know? And all these fucking dumb cunts who host these shows on TV. What do they say? Yeah, women send signals all the time and guys don't see them. Why are you sending signals? Are you fucking mute? Say what the problem is. Stop sitting over in the corner of the living room fucking flashing a flashlight at me. Like I know Morse code or whatever the fuck that is. What is that called when they when the the Navy ships would do the light thing? Is that Morse code with the light? I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm not happy in my marriage, so you you fucking slide your ring off. You know what I mean? I barely notice when you get a fucking haircut. I got four fucking babies over here. You fucking ugh. Thank God I'm not married. Thank God. Thank God. Okay, let's plow ahead here. All right. Um, so I take the uh, the warning seriously, and I get my ass in gear. Okay. Now, in defense of her, if you were like really, you know, going through a depression and shutting down, I don't know if you weren't helping with the kids. That would also put some uh, tension on it. See, look at me trying to be a little fair and balanced, just like Fox News. Um, so I, t- so I take the warning seriously, and I get my ass in gear. I needed that shake up since wallowing in depression is easy, um, but getting out of it out of it is very tough. Taking on depression and anxiety to save my marriage of 10 years and keep my family together was what made me take it seriously uh, and succeeded. Um, I worked hard all summer to get my life back in order. I was doing much better. On September 11th, great day, I know, she tells me she she went on a date. She had serious feelings for the guy. She had been seeing him for a while. They worked together at school. Rather than get mad or freak out, my first words were, I forgive you, since all I wanted was to save my kids from divorced parents. The first two years with the triplets were rough on her, too, so I tried to be understanding. All right, so you're being a good guy here. All right. Um, I wanted to live with my kids more than anything, even if it was killing me because of the stress. She agreed to go to counseling and try uh, try to fix things. All right, so they go to, they go to a marriage counselor. Uh, but he says, all for naught. Um, she never wanted to fix things. She was still seeing the guy the whole time we were fixing things, in air quotes. Um, and she just wanted to be able to say she, she just wanted to be able to say she did what she could before divorcing me. It was all just to ease her conscience two weeks after our 11th anniversary in February. I get it. It's over. Since she's never coming back to me, we talked about it. And, um, and she admitted she was going to request a trial separation in the spring anyway. On September 11th, yes, again, one year to the day, the divorce was final. I'll be drinking, I'll be drinking heavily that day the rest of my life, you can be sure. Uh, now I get calls from the kids bawling their eyes out. Sorry, everybody. I know this is bumming you out. 
bawling their eyes out because they miss me and want to live with me. And why won't I move back? Jesus Christ, what a phone call. All right, the triplets are about to turn four, and the older child is about to turn six. I would love to tell them, I can't move back because your mom is a lying, cheating, skank whore. And she let and she left me for that guy, Kevin, who comes over now, who's 10 years younger than her, who also teaches at her school. Um, but she is a good mom to them, and I don't want them to hate her mother. I'll do the hating. See, this guy's a good guy, and I bet a lot of women will listen to this shit. You know, right off the bat, they, they, you know, women stick together. I don't know why they do that. They would, when he called her a lying, cheating, skank whore, I bet a good 30% of the women who listened to that were actually like, well, she did, the reason why she did it was because you were in a depression. You were helping the kids. That's why she went out and sucked another cock. Yeah, let that roll around your feminine brain for half a fucking second. You like how I create arguments? For all I know, 100% of women are agreeing with me on this one. Anyways, let's plow ahead here. Um, now I would like to thank you for uh, all your comedy. I discovered your podcast soon after I moved out, and uh, every one of them has made my compute to work better. You've eased my anxiety. All right, let's get to underrated. Um, I do, and I appreciate all the compliments, but it's just weird for me to sit here reading what a great fucking dude I am. Let me tell you why you're awesome, Bill. I don't want to read these people. They just send them to me, and I, I'm doing it for the fans. Anyways, um, he says, uh, what the fuck is it? Now, for the not-so-mushy part. Good, we got past all the compliments. Please rip my cold and distant ex-wife a new one. Could you just call her a cunt one time on your show for me? Um, yeah, I could do that, but I really think it goes without saying. You know what I mean? Put it this way. If they made a 2010 cunt calendar, she would be January, you know, to kick it off. <laughs> just to kick it off, you know, let you know what you were uh, in store for. There you go. 